Good evening, everyone. What a pleasure to see you all here tonight at the second day of our third international Stretto Piano Festival. Uh, as some of you know, if you were here last night, this piano belongs to me. And if you are coming here for the first time tonight, this is my piano. I had it rebuilt in 1997 to have uh, narrower keys to fit my little hand and to fit other people who have medium size and small hands. It's a 44 inch keyboard as opposed to a 48 inch keyboard and it's really, really fun to play. Um, if anybody plays piano here, we want to welcome you to the stage after the concert's over so you can experience what it's like. And I'll talk a little bit more about the festival later. Now I'd really like to just uh, introduce our honored guest artist. Uh, his name is Roger Lord, and he hails from the province of New Brunswick in Canada. He is absolutely delightful. Let's give him a nice warm welcome.
this very special festival. <clears throat> and as you know, I'm playing a piano with narrow keys. And after decades of practicing and playing on a regular piano, I've had to adapt to this in the last two days. So it's like, <laughs> it's like if you're skating on, I don't know, rollerblades and you're, you're not used to. But I'm, I'm, I would say bear with me, I'm doing my best. But I think it's really, really great. I'm a big supporter of this instrument because I'm a music professor, I'm a piano professor, and I realized that I could benefit from a piano with narrower keys, and also many of my students could, especially girls who oftentimes have smaller hands. So, um, yeah, the, so the first uh, cup, uh, couple of pieces were by, by French composer uh, Jean-Philippe Rameau, who uh, lived at the same time as Bach and uh, Handel and Scarlatti. He was very influential in the development of harmony. Now, uh, the next two pieces will be by Canadian composers. Actually, both of them are French Canadian. Um, uh, the first composer is Pierre Galland, and he's originally from my province, New Brunswick. And New Brunswick is a province in Canada uh, that shares its longest border with the state of Maine. So if you can visualize the map, you can probably locate it. And uh, in New Brunswick, but New Brunswick is a bilingual province, and uh, I'm of a bilingual family. My father is Anglophone, my mother is French Canadian. And uh, so um, you've probably heard of the Cajuns in Louisiana. Well, the French Canadian in the eastern part of Canada are called the Acadians, and they went to Louisiana and eventually became not Acadians, but Cajuns. So Pierre Galland wrote this piece inspired uh, from the music and the melody of uh, a song uh, by the, that came from the First Nations of Canada. Now the second piece is by François Morel, and in this piece he explores, I mean I think I get to play almost every key of the keyboard, and he explores the various sonorities, and you can feel the influence of Olivier Messiaen in his work. Thank mm -hmm. you.
because of complications with Omicron and COVID, I couldn't come. But I got another invitation about a week after this, my participation was canceled. I was invited to uh, Istanbul and Ankara, and I decided to learn a piece of Turkish music. So mm -hmm. this will also explore new similarities on the keyboard. And I really like this piece because it's very minimalist and it creates a very mystical ambiance. So it's called Masal, which means fairy tale. It's a very short piece, but quite uh, unusual.
God bless you.
While you're settling in. Thank you, thank you. So while we're settling in, and for the, the, the new people here tonight, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, my name is Hannah Ryman. I'm the creator, the founder of this festival, the uh, artistic director who invited another artistic director in Australia to join me to make this an international festival. And we had another artistic director in Dallas because there actually is a worldwide movement of people playing pianos that have been rebuilt to have small keys. This is a really little known phenomenon. Um, but I started this effort in 2021 when the but the world was still quite bleak and dark uh, during the pandemic. And um, I experienced something that I've never known before. I worked with these two women online that I had never met and who were just crazy about something that I was crazy about. And we wound up having 18 people playing concerts. Um, they came from four different continents and we made $10,000 as a group. There were 400 people in attendance and we did zero marketing. It was the most bizarre experience. And I remember telling the CEO of Steinway and Sons at the time um, that we made $10,000 and there was this dead silence at the end of the phone. I think he wanted me to fail. <laughs> I think he, he didn't know what to do when I reported this news. And then the next year, we had 32 people on five continents, and I decided to rent a small hall. Um, and it became more exciting. People were still wearing masks back then, and we had to do all of these protocols. So I took the courage to bring us all together in this beautiful place uh, for the sake of the piano, and really for people like my beautiful assistant, Julia, who graduated playing a piano like this and got her master's degree on it and really prefers to play a piano with small keys. So I would like the world to know that they have this option. Uh, but what I learned was the manufacturers aren't going to just serve us. And what I believe the right way to do this is to just keep having concerts. So um, there are QR codes on the back of every program. There's a large poster down in the lobby with all of our faces on it and a QR code. If anybody would like to donate to our building a Stretto Piano Concert Hall in New York City, since it's a major city and there are artists all over the world who would like to come here and play this piano, I don't know how else to do it. <laughs> If anybody has ideas and would like to make suggestions, if they think there's a better way to do it, I can't think of a better way. Everyone loves to play my piano. I've lived without it since 2018 because the CEO of the most influential piano company in the world asked me to do this, and I'm finding that I have to follow through on my own. He retired. Uh, he didn't take this anywhere further, even though we had great success. So I just want to let that kind of gestate with all of you. If you know anyone who has deep pockets, who may be aligned to this effort and feels inspired by it, introduce them to us. We really are a movement all over the world. Um, OK, enough. <laughs> and, if anybody wants to talk about it more or learn about it more, uh, Roger and I just decided we'll be going to the Hotel Chelsea to hang out after he plays some more beautiful music for you. Um, so without any further ado, let's give another warm welcome to Roger Lord. Christopher Walken, and I was thinking, Christopher, what do you mean Christopher Walken? Well, yeah, Christopher 
Dr. Martin's in front of him. This, and I was thinking, well, this guy's world famous, you know, in the piano world and for piano teachers, he's like, like a superstar of piano compositions. And I thought, well, not the Christopher Martin. And he said, yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyway, so I drove to Fredericton, which is about a two hour drive, and I met with Christopher. Christopher is originally from New Zealand. He lived for over 40 years in uh, the UK, in London. And he married a lady from Fredericton, New Brunswick, in Canada, and moved to Canada. He now lives in Stratford, Ontario, so he's not very far from England, I guess. You know, there's a Thames, no, that's in London. But anyway, so, uh, yeah, because we also have a London, Ontario. We have Windsor, we have <laughs> we're very much tied to England. And anyway, so Christopher wrote these pieces and asked me to play them, to perform them. He also composed a uh, second piano sonata, which I still have to premiere. I learned it, but I still haven't had the opportunity to play it in public. Now, you will hear 10 pieces from Piano Connections. What I need to tell you also is that Christopher, when I say he's a superstar, his piano books have sold in the millions. So this is really rare in classical music. I mean, I've traveled to Singapore, young students play his pieces, I mean, all over Canada, in Korea, uh, in Australia, and uh, so I'm very, very proud to introduce his pieces tonight. So I chose uh, uh, 10 pieces uh, from uh, actually volume nine and 10 of Connections for Piano. Uh, I actually performed the, at 18, the 18, but for some of these, it will be world premieres because some have never, I think, never been performed in public yet. So I invite you to follow the program because here again, I mean, the titles will really help you to appreciate uh, each piece. I'd like to mention that uh, what is neat about his inspiration in jazz, in blues, in world music, in tango, and you will, and even there's a piece with the Chinese flair, uh, you know, the Chinese flavor, I should say, and I think you will appreciate that.
teacher, I'm very grateful to Mr. Norton because my students like to play these pieces. And when I was 14, 15, 16 years old, I would have loved to play this as opposed to maybe a Haydn sonata, you know? <laughs> but now I do love Haydn, I do love Mozart, but there was that period of time, in, uh, there is that period of time in one's life when we like to play something like this. And I think, uh, I, I actually should mention that I have several students who said to me, oh, I think maybe I'm gonna quit, they're maybe 13, 14, and suddenly they play a piece by Christopher Norton and they say, oh, <laughs> so, you know, we we're very grateful to, uh, to, to Mr. Norton for his composition and his amazing work. Now, the next piece on the program is a piece that I love very much, a composer uh, that I love very much, uh, Astor Piazzolla from Argentina. And this piece has a special meaning for me because I actually learned that piece during the pandemic. And I was, uh, actually, I, I got a little bad luck. As I was crossing the street, I walked into a crack and I broke my foot and ankle. And for three months, I had a cast and I kind of, I don't know, we were isolated, we were in confinement and I kind of felt sorry for myself and I thought, this was my comfort piece and I learned that piece and every night I would go to the piano and play it and actually I had to play with the left foot for the pedal. But I, I'm sure you will, if you don't know it already, you will love it. It's called Oblivion by Astor Piazzolla. This is an arrangement that I found on, online, and I kind of rearranged the arrangement.
which hall the whole staff of the media Edelman Recital Hall in here at Pearl College, uh, Howard Sherman. Uh, tonight, Dan is here and uh, Sherry as well. Uh, I'd like to thank also um, Julia Furlan. She is assistant coordinator of this festival. And uh, Hannah Ryman, who you've heard speak my sincere thanks to, to Hannah. She's the founder and artistic director of this festival. And of course, I would like to thank you for attending this concert. Hopefully you can come to the other events as well. Um, since we are in New York, I thought I could maybe put together a little medley of pieces by George Gershwin. Actually, I've been doing that. You know, I'm the kind of person that I like to have fun at the piano. So, I mean, piano can be a very expressive, sometimes a sad instrument, but it can be a fun instrument too. So, uh, here is a medley of songs that you will recognize by George Gershwin. <laughs>
is the assistant coordinator, uh, Julia Ferlin, and uh, we have a little surprise for you. I think we don't need, it doesn't need an introduction, but uh, I'm just going to maintain the same kind of spirit. <laughs> Party time. <laughs>